three. A pretzel company sells cylindrical containers with a radius of 10 centimeters and a height of 30 centimeters. The company's pack packaging designers are considering switching to a new, brand, new citrical container with a radius of 20 centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. How does the volumes of the proposed new containers compare to the volumes of the old containers? And then it gives us a whole bunch of answers. I want to break this up. In the last problem, we broke it up into three parts, but I want to break it up into to two sections here. And sometimes you may be a reader, if this is, a, and you may have difficulty when you read, visualizing what you, uh, what you, what's presented here. And so to help me with that, I'm just going to right now just practice a strategy to help with reading comprehension. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick apart some key images. First of all, I think a very important, a very important key image that you, you need to know is have an image of we have a, what a cylindrical container is. Because that is actually repeated several times. In fact, if we just think about container here, container is a key word. How many times do they say container? They say it a lot, don't they? Now, I don't remember we were doing the title anchor strategy before. Container, container, container. This is a key word. It was in, I think, uh, like problem number 15 or something. Look at that. Have you ever seen a problem that's used container so many times? Well, it wants you to, a container is something you put stuff into. So, whenever they say container, you should be thinking of like a box or a cylindrical t container, that's like a, a can. These are three-dimensional shapes. So when you think of three-dimensional shapes, this cylindrical container would be like a, would be like a, a soda can bottle or a, or a pretzel, you know, one of those nut, you know, those, those lunchy nuts, those, those nuts you can get. You should be thinking about, you should visualize what that is. I'm dealing with the cylindrical, that means it has a circular base container. All right, so you have to have this visual in your head. Cylindrical is circular container, so it means instead of a box, it's got a circular base. And I got these two containers, and you should be thinking container involves volume. So this is a key word for volume, and Guess what? That's our second most used word and our second key key word here is volume. Look how many times it's used. One, two, where else is it used? Um, double here, a double, a double whammy here. You, you get the idea. More over, one over here, another over here, another over here, another over here. So right away I'm thinking volume of a cylindrical container. How the heck do I do that? Well, I gotta find out that involves whatever the base is. The formula for that is, what's the formula for a cylinder? Isn't it base times whatever the height is? The height's easy. The base, since it's a circle, we're gonna actually find out the area of that circle. So, you know, what is, what is the area of that? Well, isn't that, isn't for base, aren't we going to substitute in pi r squared to find out the area of that base? So it really, if we want to do it, though, if we want to think about this, the area of this cylinder is really whatever the base is times the height. And since the base is, and I know normally you think of the base as this bottom portion here, so that's correct. It's the area of this times the height. I just, you know, wrote my circle on the top. But anyways, base times a height, and since the base is a circle, I'm finding the area of that base, or another way to think about that is pi r squared times the height. And this is the formula that you're going to be using. This is the formula you got to get, you know, used to, oops, when you think about, oops, when you think about the area of a cylinder. The area of a cylinder, that's like a Coca-Cola can, is pi r squared the base times the height. All right, now I'm gonna wipe all that away and go back to my question. 
I picked up, oh, I picked up the clues in this one right here. So I have these two cylindrical shapes. These two cylindrical shapes. The first one is a can that looks kind of like this. So I'm doing my bases on the top for artistic reasons. It's got a radius of 10, that's my R, and it's got a height of 30. And the second one, the second one, you know, the radius is twice as big. It's one of those big cans. The radius is, the radius is 20, and it's got um, 15 as a height, not so, not so big. And we, we're going to be comparing how does the volume of the new container compare with the old container. So let's find out the first. Let's find out the old one. So what's my formula? Base times height, or since the base is a circle, what is it? Remember, you find out the area of that circle. The area of the circle is pi r squared. So we're going to do base is pi. Get a better color there. Pi times whatever the radius is squared times 30. Well, our radius is 10. So that would be 10 squared is 100 pi times 30. Or we could just say 30 times 100 would be 3,000 pi. This one has a, a combined volume. This is 3,000 pi. Oh, and I guess we could say uh, centimeters cubed, right? Because we're dealing with volume. Well, what's the area of this one? Again, I do my formula. Pi times whatever the radius is squared. That's the area of the top times 15. What's the radius? The radius this time is 20. What's 20 squared? By the way, as a general note for all these exams, you should know your perfect square is up to 20, 25, I think if you know it up to 25, it will really, really be helpful. And just learn, you know, your perfect square is, you know, 25, 30, 45. You know, 25, 30, 35, 45, you know. Just learn them. After that, just go, you know, on the fives. But that will really help you with this. So anyways, 20 squared is 400, right? So that would be 15 times 400 times pi. I don't know. And what's four? That would be what? 6,000 pi is this one right here. All right, so what does that tell me? Well, I'm comparing the new, the new area, which is this, the new volume, which is the 6,000 pi centimeters cubed times the old one. Now I'm going to read the answer choices. The new volume of the container is less than the old container? No, it's that's not true. If I'm doing the fork strategy, I know that the new one looks like it's more. So every time I see a less, I cross out that answer. It doesn't matter how much it's less by. I know that it's more. I could eliminate A and B right away. Okay, so I knew the new container is equal. No, it's not equal. The new container is twice the volume. It's this one right here. So this problem here, it requires you to do two things. It requires you to be able to visualize the cylindrical container. It asks you to find the volume of the cylindrical container. I guess that's actually more than two things. And then the last thing is you got to be able to read through this. And if you use one of the strategies, um, you'll be able to say, well, even if your calculations are off, right? You, if you did it roughly right, use the right formula, you should get that this is approximately twice as big, or at the very least, more than the first container. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful. This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops, and, uh, or sign up for some one-to-one -one tutoring if you need some more help. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.